Hello uh, Shadows, welcome to the next instalment of the BSA build. Uh, you're probably wondering what's been happening with the BSA build because I haven't looked at it for a little while. But um, I've been getting various parts from various places to get this engine rebuilt. And I did get a puller from a company called Fect Clutch Puller and it didn't fit. I was going to show you it but I think I must have thrown it at a wall or something. In disgust so I got a new one uh, the other day and I think this one will fit can't remember what company I got it from um, so it really is just get the um, get the clutch off now um, I played the uh, guessing game to wonder if this bolt is metric or Imperial and it's metric 19 mil so um, Let's see if we can get this clutch off. So I haven't got a, um, a clutch holder. So um, one of my favourite tools, rattle gun time. Obviously make sure it's spinning the right way and that is the right way. Don't go mad with it. Hopefully it'll work. Yet. There we go. Okay, well that's off now. So I just need to um, get this side off and then the whole thing can come straight off. So this side was a bit stiff, uh, I used a, a three jaw puller on that one, so now we've got both sides working the um, Woodruff key uh, came out, so we'll need to find somewhere to put that so we don't lose it, and the whole thing should just slide off, like so. so we need to um, undo this next and then start look at the other side see what needs to come off the other side and start pulling it apart in fact I might leave the other side on and see if we can get away with just taking this side off because I want to try and keep the gearbox together on the other side with the on the on the gearbox plate but let's see if that works or not no idea if it's going to work but you never know we'll have a go the joys of building old engines, particularly British ones, right? <coughs> this would be, this side casing would be off, apart from that screw there, and that plate just encroaching on it just enough to not be able to fit a socket onto it. So that plate will need to come off, but I think someone lock tighted that one, thread locked it because those screws do not want to come out so I'll probably have to get an impact wrench on them and hope for the best well at least it's coming together little challenges that's all little challenges so these uh, screws are rather chewed and feel like there is possibly um, thread locked so let's give it a bit of heat see if that will free them
still nothing. So we'll try it. A bit more heat again. So a little bit of heat worked. And there's a little bit of heat. And also using a T-bar instead of a screwdriver to give a bit more purchase. This is still a bit warm. Get this off now. And then okay, so now I'm doing that sprocket, get that off, and then split these cases. So after undoing that final nut and then using a copper hammer to lightly tap at the, this case, um, it's finally come undone. Just gentle taps left and right, left and right, up and down, left and right. And then we have the case separated. And that obviously means things are starting to get a bit serious so we need to have a look at this uh, crank and um, move on to the next stage so I've removed the, um, the final drive sprocket nut and um, tap washer it's, um, this big thing, 38mm um, long reach socket that worked on that one. Now it's a case of um, get that bearing off. I don't have the special tool for that bearing, but I'm going to tip it so it's facing down a couple of pieces of wood, heat that up, and then the expansion should just allow that bearing to sort of slide off. So as you can see the engine's flipped over and then it's a case of using heat gun against the bearing down there and um, the expansion will let it drop. So I'll crack on with that and get back to you once it's done. So we've tried heat, we've tried pry bars. So it's now to get time to get a bit more serious and bought myself on eBay a fancy set of bearing pullers. So let's set these up. And finally we've got it off so don't use heat, don't use pry bars, use one of these and one of those and it gets it right off. Now I've, I've uh, swapped that side of the case. I'm going to swip it, flip it round, and start on the other side, and replace those bearings that I need to replace. So I flip the engine over to the other side. I've taken all the screws out, and now I need to undo this little fella here, so take the tab washer out, take the nut off, bring the gearing out. So that's off now. Now the way I did it is I put the socket back on the other side because obviously this is spinning. Then I wedged it using the brass drift and then use the rattle gun on the nut while well, that's locked off. Job done. That's everything off and in the um, in the jet pot, the jam pot for safekeeping. On to the next bit. So the next part is to get that little cotter pin out there, and then this bit here will slide out. So just using a pair of pliers to flatten off the bottom of the cotter pin and then just use a pick and 
just to pull it out. And then, figure out how to slide this thing out. So this pin here, it's got a ridge inside the hole just down there. And just using a right angle, um, just hook it. Hard to do when you've got a camera in your hand. Hook it in there and just sort of pull it out. And it'll um, slowly slide out. And there we are, slid out. Just using... little right-handed pick so that goes in the gem jar as well to keep safe so that that should be enough to get the um, side case off so I'll just get a soft hammer and just knock it and see if it starts to move just been trying to get this case off but it wouldn't budge but the one screw that was eluding me was the kickstart spring stop that actually goes all the way through the case couldn't find a, an imperial to fit it but a 9 mil did so that's off and the cases are now coming apart there we have it gearbox case off now we need to start stripping this moving it over to the other case so the next bit is to undo this nut i've already banged over the the tab so get the um the jugger jugger gun on it making sure that you can see there's a mark just there and there's a little sort of pimple mark if you can get that on the camera where are you? It's like a little line. I think you just about see it. Just, just about there. So when on reassembly, you have to sort of line those two up. So I'm going to take that bit off, then see if it frees off the whole case, or we may have to take the old pump out. Cam shaft out but let's see shall we that was easy enough off with the um, ratchet get the tab off get the gear out and then we'll see if we can separate the cases okay, the next thing to come off when we're splitting the cases is this fella here and um, it is a two jaw puller that's needed one like this one with very fine um ends on so you can fit it behind the gear so we'll just fit that now as you can see they've got behind the gear and it's just a case of winding that centre pin in and it'll pull the gear off we'll just keep winding on off comes the gear so that uh, two jaw puller was 9.99 off Amazon and it definitely does the trick 
think for nine ninety nine. It's better just to buy one than actually make one. So we now need to get that worm drive off and just see there. Whoops. It's got a woodruff key there. And that's being a bit stubborn. So I'm going to try a couple of methods. The first one is to use side cutters on it and give it a good grip and then sort of lever it out. If that doesn't work, we're going to use a bit of heat. So I'll try the side cutters first. Surprisingly, the side cutters actually worked. So we don't need to put any heat on that. We just now need to get that worm drive off and then we'll be able to split the cases. Bit of leverage with a screwdriver in the grooves, being very careful. And now the um, worm drive is off. Just see what else we need to do to separate the case, but I think we should be okay. So the crank wouldn't come out with some gentle persuasion with a rubber mallet. So I've stuck it in the press put an aluminium cap over the top of the um, end of the crank and hopefully it'll press out so wish me luck well, it's definitely moving but it's taking the bearing with it, it looks like so I'm gonna have to get a bearing puller on when this is out but at least we're getting somewhere that's the crank out so now we just need to get a bearing puller on the bearing and get that off. Now back onto the, the bearing puller again. Fast becoming my favourite tool. Get this bearing off. So now we've got that crack bearing off. It's now time to put the well clean the faces up first. Give everything a good clean and then stick the two cases together. So I thought I'd show you the method I'm using to pull the cases together. So I'll put a stud in in that one, threaded bar, and some um, nuts and wash on the end of there. Using the sort of the standard bolts here, standard nuts there. What I'm doing is going round each part, tightening a little bit, tightening a little bit, and just keeping that, keeping that tension on so it doesn't, doesn't twist or anything. It just goes down nice and straight. So I'm going to keep ratcheting and turning these bolts and bringing the two cases together in a nice, slow and controlled way, so the um, it doesn't go. Um, so the crank doesn't go. It doesn't. The crank doesn't go into the uh, bearing at a, at a wonky angle. It should be nice and straight. So now it's all together. We just start to need to transfer some of the other bits from the other case. So I'm just transferring um, these um, stator screws. And this one's being a bit um, stubborn. Use the old um, technique of adding another um, spanner to it to give a bit more length. And there you go. That works there. Just a nice little tip if you've never used it before. So I'll crack on, taking those and adding them to the, that case. Now to put the timing side together, one thing to note on these push rod cam followers, you notice that one side has got a different angle, a thinner angle than the other side. That side needs to be forward, like that way. So just something to watch out for. Next, it's now start to time to now start fit, fit some gaskets. 
So I bought this, oh God, months ago, months ago. So hopefully it's got all the, it's a full gasket set. I've got every gasket in I need, hopefully. So I'm going to crack that open and fit the gasket for the oil pump first. So first gasket on is the oil pump gasket. I don't use any Hyler bar or any bathroom sealer or anything for this gasket. Just smear a bit of grease on it either side and then that'll do that. That can really only go on one way. <coughs> Just look at the, uh, the casing marks behind it. And then it's on with the oil pump. I've left it unscrewed because this um, worm drive needs to go on. There. Notice the space is already in there, and there may be some jiggery pokery needed to happen to get those lined up with those, and also get the um, the um, what are they called Woodruff key lined up as well. So I've left it um, unscrewed. The actual low pump itself is nice and, nice and free. I'll have another go at that once I've got everything else on it to make sure it still stays free. But it's looking good so far. So I just use a tube to actually tap this gear on. And if we just see there, the Woodruff key notch is aligned with the, uh, the worm drive notch. So I just need to figure out where I stored the Woodruff key, stick that in place, make sure that that timing mark there aligns with timing mark on the camshaft. I will start on the top end rebuild. So first of all, I've greased that base gasket. So you need for that gasket. I've set the rings to be 90 degrees from each other so they don't all sort of line up and we lose compression. Top one's there. I think the middle one you can just about see around the side there. The bottom one's around there somewhere. So next thing is just to lubricate this barrel. Just some old engine oil. And then I usually use my fingers to crush the to squeeze the um, the rings and put the um, put the barrel on. So I've been trying to get this um, barrel on the piston for a little while now. The rings are incredibly stiff. Normally you just sort of press them and push the barrel over the top of them, but they are really stiff. So I'm going to have to get hold of a Jubilee clip. Fortunately, I haven't got one big enough. So um, I'll have to get one ordered. I'll pop somewhere and get one. So I think we'll call it end of another day. Rebuilding this engine. Hopefully at some point we can get onto the bodywork. Some point soon. Um, so yeah. Barrel ahead on next. And then we can start putting the gearbox back together again. And get this engine together. As always, <clears throat> thanks for watching, like, subscribe, tell your friends who are into old, smelly British motorcycles, um, hit the bell button, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks everyone.